We're glad to present your speaker, Brother Marshall Keeble. And Jesus Brother Christ Marshall. was suspended between the twilight of two worlds. Uh, we had to have some elements there and uh, to save man. And blood and water were the two elements that came out of the side of Jesus. When the soldier pressed him in the side, these elements were there and they came out of his side. And then the, the blood that was shed for the remission of the sins of the world, it came out of his side. And all of that showing us what it is or what's necessary to uh, cleanse us from our sins. That blood's essential and the water that came up with his side is essential. And he can't be washed without water. And he can't be get to the cleansing power unless he learns where it is. Well, if I stand here and tell you that the blood's in the water, I speak correctly. I said blood and water came out of his side. But when a soldier pierced him in the side, there's your two elements. And then when that blood is shed on, when it was, it was shed Jesus dying for the world. And, and not only that, that same blood bought the church. Therefore, we just understand that he said, God, the, the elders feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. The blood that was shed on Calvary was even the blood that bought the church. And the church was paid for. Now, the only way to reach this cleansing power, like you women hear more and speaking on television, why they tell you, get your washing machine. And then they tell you, then get your water. And then they tell you to go, go get dash. Dash. Well, what is dash? Dash is the cleansing power. You can put dash in the in the washing machine, and you can put it in there and let it stay there all day. You never get your clothes clean. You're going to have to get you some water. And the water and dash. The water and the blood that cleanses from every sin. Now, this young man labored extensively tonight to show you that baptism is essential to salvation. Jesus Christ even begged to be baptized. He didn't only, only have to be told to be baptized, or he didn't wait to be told. He went to the preacher and begged to be baptized. If the people understood correctly tonight, they'd be in Nashville all around now, begging to be baptized if they had never been baptized. You would be come down here now and beg brother people to baptize you tonight. If you understood the Bible, you wouldn't want to go home out of Christ, but you would have to come to Christ through the water. The children of Israel had to cross the Red Sea. Or they couldn't go to the land of Canaan. And in the act of, in the act of crossing the Red Sea, uh, the, 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 the enemy was slain. And the enemy of man today is his sin. And when he crossed through the waters of baptism, every sin is, is destroyed. The Egyptians were destroyed. They followed up there and followed God's people right to the, to the, river, to the Red Sea. And when they got there, they were handicapped. Walled on both sides, mountains rather as they come up to the Red Sea, surrounded, but then there they stood, didn't know what to do, but Moses says this, and I think this is advice we ought to give all people. If you don't know what to do, stand still. Don't go jumping down in a Moses bench and roll all night. Stand still till you learn what to do. Why do you not know they stood there and waited on Moses? Then God spoke and Moses stretched the rod out over the sea. And while the rod was hanging over the sea, the, God, the divine hand of God and the power of God parted the Red Sea. And then Moses commanded them to march, and they marched across. And even God, to prove that he had the power, dried the bottom. He dried the bottom, and they marched through the Red Sea uh, on dry land. And sometimes, in order to make my point clear about this water, they walked across their own dry land. And not only that, the power of God was demonstrated, never have been read nowhere, have never read nowhere, where the bottom of the Red Sea was dry, I might say dusty, and hadn't been dusty since because God didn't want it that way no more. If he wanted that way today, he could do it. I just believe that strong, but when he marched, told him to march across, after the waters congealed on both sides. And Webster says the word congealed means ice. And everybody believes Webster. You can't get nobody. They dispute the Bible, but not Webster. They tell you Webster's right. Webster's right. Webster. Not Paul is right. Webster's right. 
Uh, Paul said, baptism washed your sins away. Why don't you say he's right? No, it's Webster. Well, Webster is right in his field. He said, right, I'll take him in his field. But when it comes down to religion, it's God. God is right. His word is right. And every word of it is right. And we know it's right. Now then, then they stood at the Red Sea, and the water that hole was made. Did you know them children of Israel had to have a lot of faith to go through that? They didn't see nothing whole in the water. But me or you and I would have said, now how are you going to make it through that? As far as it is through yonder, and they don't see nothing whole in that. Faith led them through that. By faith they crossed the rest. Faith leads us down into water baptism today. If you haven't got your faith, you're not going in there. And without that faith, you can't be saved. Without faith, impossible to be saved. So we have to have faith. You've got to go down in the water. And of two or three things I'd like to call your attention to. You must have this kind of faith. Go down in the water of baptism, believing that Christ is down there. Believing the blood's down there. Not only that, you've got to believe that it cleanses you from every sin. You've got to believe that. And when you go down with that proper faith, you come out with the thing accomplished that God said that was for. For what? Remission of sin. This young man that's preached in front of me tonight, if he just keeps on running and tracking that thing like he did, nobody can meet him. Nobody can dispute it successfully. And he'll take care of the church for after Brother Keeble and all of us here are sleeping beneath this sod. He'll be able to do that. Just keep him grow and grow, and the church will be more and more proud of him. Sometimes I wonder, are we sleeping on this thing you call education? Have we gone to sleep or what? Somebody said, well, what's the matter with them old time preachers? They didn't go to school. But yeah, I know they didn't go to school. But somebody had a hold them that had been to school. So you, 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 you know, I think you go to school. But somebody had it. You, I can tell them every minute the man's been properly taught. He just said, go teach. Go teach who all nations. And after you've taught them and that gets them to understand it, that part of them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And when these children crossed the cross on the Red, in the Red Sea and got on the other side, then what did they do? They stood right there and noticed the enemy destroyed with what? I want to read that little word with is important. That little word with, it destroyed with water. And then when I lead a man down in the baptism and bury him with God with the day, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, least of sins, I'm looking on a man that's being baptized, translated out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of God's dear son. That all happened. In that transaction, that all happened. And we're born to water. Did you know man is the only thing that God created that has to be born twice? That's right. He's the only thing that God created it has to be born twice. If a man saved, it has to be born twice. Born into the world and then born into the kingdom of God. He's going to have to be born if he's saved. Well, what has he got to do? you got to bury him. And in the bed of Christ, into Christ, by baptism, we rise to walk in the newness of life. We've taken the pains that we take that because the audience like this is always somebody in it that wants a little more information on baptism. I never go into audience. The over in Memphis here not long ago, there was an old gentleman came in there just before we left him down there. He wanted to know, would he have to be baptized again? Well, I told him scripturally, you've never been baptized. You just got wet. I said, I'm baptized. I said, no, I doubt you've ever been baptized. And then I could go over, and he got the spoon, got one baptism, one law, and I went over in the Bible and showed him why some people got two baptisms, and then one. And yeah, that's, that's doctrine. That's God said he hadn't thought about that, but that's not trouble now. I know, I, I know, it was the two baptisms. Uh, did you know that uh, when, when uh, John's baptism, some people at Ephesus, I believe it was, and uh, uh, Paul came up to them and he questioned them about their baptism. Under whose baptism were you baptized? He questioned them. And that thing is as important now. People who say they've been baptized, they need to be questioned about it. Well, what about your first baptism? Well, a whole lot has to do with whether you believed it when you were doing it. Do you understand it? When you go down in the water baptize it, baptism, anything you do for God, get a good understanding. All of that getting, get a good understanding. And there the children of Israel was, 
And they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea. They were covered up as they crossed over. And the Egyptians pursuing after them, what became of them? Destroyed. Never heard of anymore. And the sins that we commit when we go down into the waters of baptism and come up, they'll never be mentioned anymore. They are gone. Just like the Egyptians were destroyed in the Red Sea, also we uh, go down the water of baptism and all of our sins are destroyed and will never come up against us anymore. Wash away in water of baptism. And not only that, the man who goes down in the water of baptism with the proper understanding, he comes back another man. I do, I'm not afraid to say that. He went down one man and came back another one. All done almost in the twinkling of an eye. God's going to do something else in the twinkling of an eye. All of us that are remaining on this earth, when Jesus comes back, we'll have to do something with us to get up off of the earth. Ain't no time for burial. He's just going to change it. No burying in nothing. And the twinkling of eye is all over. That's all. That's all. And you know, we ought to be getting ready for that final day because he might come while we're still walking around in that. Well, you've got to be changed because no flesh and blood can go up there. Ain't no flesh and blood going to hell. Going to hell, that flesh, what is evil spirit going down, good and going up. That's what we're, and you're going to have to get into Christ in order to die without, having to, without being changed and the twinkling of an eye. And I want to say to you again, and the children of Israel stood there on the other side of the Jordan or the Red Sea and saw the enemy destroyed. Destroyed with water. God done that. That's a nice water job, isn't it? Well, surely he can wash your sins away if he can destroy a whole nation. Take water and destroy a whole nation of people. And if he can do that, he can take water and wash my sins away. Because the man wants a drunkard, a habitual drunkard. Had a family. He was mean to his family. As, as a lot of men are. Abusive. Get drunk and come home. Stomping around. Running over everybody. And everybody skipping like they're scared to death. A lot of men want that. Somebody who's scared. Somebody jumping. And he thinks he's the head of the family. But did you not know? This man went to the meeting and was baptized. His wife left him and took all the children and went home. Told her papa she stopped uh, tied staying at home being beat up. And the husband comes home drunk and she, he said, just come right on in. And any good father will try to take his child and provide for it when they have a husband like that. And here she is at the door and he's been beaten on her. She's come to get rid of that beating and that cruel treatment. Did you know that pretty soon he comes and knocks on the door and his father-in-law steps up to the door and says, uh, you just get on away from you beat on her enough. He said, Papa, I've never hit her in my life. Well, I know you have. I've seen you beating on her. I've come up when you was beating on her. I know you have. No, sir, I never did hit her. I was baptized in a meeting up, up there last night, obeyed the gospel, and I'm another man. I never hit her. Is that good? Well, if that ain't straight, then you tell me how he was telling the truth. He said, I've never hit her. The old man is driving him out of the yard. Get on out. Get on. You are. She's not going back to take that street. She said, I ain't never hit her. Why, she says, you used to curse her. No, I never did curse her. I ain't never cursed her. I sound like he's mine. Nobody was telling the truth. He's got a good understanding that what he did up at the church and he's baptized and sins and washed away and he's coming to his wife, another man. Another man. A brand new man, made over, regenerated, an heir of God and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Born again and regenerated. If that ain't changing a man around, it takes God to do that. That's what they call, I think, in some of the languages, a new birth. Born again. A new birth. Every man needs another one. I don't care how old he is. If he's never had it, he needs another one. Quite plain enough. And Nicodemus came to Jesus' word when Jesus talked to him about this new birth. He had a misconception. Why, he asked one of the most foolish questions that would ever ask for any human being. Can I go back and be born to my mother? Can you understand? A ruler of the Jews come up with a... Oh, he looks like he ought to have better sense than that. But when you're ignorant, you're just ignorant. Is that right? Jesus said, I am not talking about you, mother. You 
got the wrong conception that the name that I'm talking about your mother. I'm talking about a water baptism. I'm talking about there is Christ in baptism, born of water and of the Spirit. And you, I'm not discussing your mother. He wanted to know, could he go back and be born of his mother? Sin as he could be. A ruler. And that's in the inner city right today, them smart ones. In the college and had his brains expanded. Why, well, he thinks he knows everything. He's a doctor. He's a reverend. He's a D.D. and a double L.D. Too much, ain't he, brother? He's just too much to have good sins. And Nicodemus came up there, no sins at all. Asked a cynic question. A little child would have known better than that. But when you don't know, you just don't know. Jesus said, you have to be born of water and of the Spirit. Or you cannot even, not only go to heaven, you can't see it. I'm going to see that you don't see it. Plain as it can be. And that same teaching that he did to Nicodemus is the same teaching we need tonight. I don't care who you are. I was preaching in Detroit once, and the boy was waking for very well for later, and he was attending the meeting, and... And he went back to work the next morning after he was there, and he told the white lady when he was serving breakfast, he said, I wish you all could hear Brother Keeble, our preacher for national preaching. And the lady said, well, can it could I him? She said, yes, and said, he's preaching over the radio in the morning, and I'd like to go in, and I don't have a radio. Would you let me come? She said, yes, you could. Just when it comes on, you just come. There's somebody good white people in the world. Just call him from the garage, said, your preacher's on. Your preacher's on. Well, the boy come out of the garage and run in there and sit down and had never sit down in the living room before, but she had him in there listening. <laughs> He's in the living room sitting down listening. And she says, is that, that the preacher that you say, yes, sir? And then he said he looked up and she was peeping through the door listening at it. And you know, so the next night she went over to the meeting. She wanted some more. Everybody wants it. If they ever hear as plain as it is, you're crazy for it. Simple and plain, nothing plainer. You can't keep her nor but her understanding it. And she told him the next morning, I enjoyed your preacher. I enjoyed your preacher. But I learned later on from the brother that said she was baptized as the White Church of Christ uh, several years after that. It stayed with her. This thing, you can't get rid of it if you ever understand it. You can't rest. I'm trying to preach now so you can go home and can't rest tonight. I hope you can't do nothing but roll and talk. That's right. And when an individual is out of Christ, he's in a dangerous state, ain't he, brother? If you don't roll and tumble, you ought to roll. Or you're going to roll and tumble in hell. Why would you rather roll that? Get right. Get right. Get yourself right. Don't look at me. i got nothing to do with it. I'm trying to stay out of that place. That's when I was about to the water. I was buried with Christ in baptism. And I rose to walk a new life. I'm trying to walk new every day. I'm not going back into those old things. If I do, I'll be lost and go to hell and have to be rolling down there. I don't want that. And there's one in this audience tonight that's willing to give up his sin and break down that wall that keeps you separated from God. Only in baptism can that wall be broken down. I read the Bible where the children of Israel commanded to march around the walls of Jericho. Watch each day. Once each day. And on the seventh day, march around seven times. They look like fools to the people marching around walls, expecting them to fall. They do the foolish But they were doing it by faith. They were doing it by faith. Ain't nothing foolish when you do it by faith. You look foolish going into the water to be baptized. Not if you have the faith. Without having the faith. That's a, this is an old lady baptized in Murray, Kentucky. I baptized. And uh, she was loved by all the people. And she was, they were called her mother. And everybody admired her and thought she was a Christian. But when I came in that preacher, she was about 75 or 80 years old. And uh, somebody told her that some of them she was going to be baptized. She said, why, well, ain't it? The white people she worked for said, you're already a Christian. Ain't nobody better than you in town. You're just a good person. Well, there's a good person in a tent child to ask, wasn't it, brother? You look for good men. We're not looking for good men. We're looking for Christians. I, I, you, I, there's people in the Baptist church that are as good as I ever will be. Give their arm. They give more to the Lord than I do. They wear better clothes than I do. But he ain't born again. You don't have to be born again. You make, brother, when you get the right conception of this, you'll roll all night. You'll run right on into water. 
glad to do it. I was baptized a month not long ago, and the man, before I could take his confession, he didn't make it to the church. He was running out there in the water, and I liked to baptize him before he made his confession. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I couldn't tell him from the others. He was in the gang. But a man run down the water with the rest of it, somebody hollered, he ain't never to confess. I took his confession out there in the water. You got to, you got to make it. You got to confess Christ, I don't care where you are. Standing out there fishing a bit, have my whole hand up somebody hollered, you ain't never took his confession. Hand went down. He, he's got to confess, is that right? You got to confess. Except you confess me, I will not confess you before my Father and the angels of heaven. Come, confession is that full step, is it, brother? And you got to take these steps in order. You can't run one round in front of the other. May God speed the day when the Bible will be rightly divided and everybody can understand it. It's so simple and plain, it makes you wonder why don't they understand it. And this old lady I was fixing to tell you about when I baptized her, she went back in the trunk and got a dress she'd been uh, stowed away to, uh, to be buried in. And, and, and she stowed it away in the trunk, a satin, white satin dress, and and somebody told her, some of the white ladies, where well, she went, went down to help dress her. They thought so much of her. She's out there in the bushes, and they carried her way back out there in the bushes and dressed her. She comes out with a white satin dress. White satin dress, and they got around and said, don't run this muddy water with this. And run, and run this, this pretty dress. I said, no, they played out. I heard him talking out there, but I couldn't understand what. So much commotion just because her dress was too good to go in with. She said, I know what I'm doing. I married my first husband with this dress on, and now I'm fixing to marry a greater man than him. Do she understand what she's doing? She's not a crank, is she? A lot of us are cranks, but she wasn't a crank. She said, I'm going to marry another man greater than my husband. I've got it, and I put it away. I didn't know I was going to have to do this, but since I've learned the gospel, this is greater than when I married him. Fixing to be married to Christ. When we obey the gospel, the church is Christ's wife. And when you're baptized, you marry Christ. You rise out of the water, and Christ is your husband. Water saves you so you can go into him and washes you clean. So you can go in that clean and sins washed to it. I'm trying to, pre you know what I'm preaching like now. Like all of y'all were 10 years old. You can't understand this. You'll make it. <laughs> Anybody sitting here, just really, just from the heart, can't understand this. You don't need to worry about nothing. You'll make it. But ain't nobody in here that is. Nobody in here understands this. You may never do it, but you are. And I'm sorry that people are turning it down till Jesus comes back. I'm satisfied. He didn't tell you to be satisfied. you got to do the thing that satisfies Jesus. And if you ever quiet up the court, and your lawyer is pleading your case. He's got to produce proof there that will satisfy the judge and the jury. Not you. It'll satisfy you to turn you loose. That is satisfaction. You're not out to satisfaction. You go before you go before the court to get justice. You go before Jesus Christ to get justice. A man that'll really give you justice. He'll really give you justice. May God speed the day when men and women will submit to the gospel of Christ and surrender and give up the world and deny themselves and take up the cross. Will you do that tonight? I've talked enough to you. This young man talked enough. You were ready when he sat down if you were paying any attention to him. And now here I've come adding some more and endorsing it, showing that I endorse every word of it. You can't help but endorse it. It's right. You've read it. You're right to divide it. You understand it. Are you here tonight? Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will, just anybody, he doesn't pick them. If you were drunk this morning, he knocked on his door. He wants to stop you from getting drunk. You obey the gospel of the Son of God and are baptized like he told you. You lay down every weight. You lay down every sin. You deny yourselves. And I sometimes say men are so bad about running after women and uh, chasing women that are not their wives. I said sometimes uh, when you obey the gospel, just go down there. I don't mind you going down there to see you one more time and tell you ain't coming down here no more. <laughs> I want you, man, don't look for me no more. You robbed my children. You took bread out of their mouths, and I was foolish enough to let you do it. I'm not coming down here no more. And then think that's what she needs. A lot of women in town just sit and wait for a man to get paid off. Man, he got a bit of sense. Preaching the gospel, learning some sense, and he'll stay at home. He'll provide for his family. 
He lived right to see him in example that everybody comes in contact with. Are you here tonight in willing to so surrender? Willing to bow, submit yourself to God Almighty and go down in the water of baptism and be regenerated. Let God add you to his church.